Alright, you guys. So, I don't know how well you guys can hear me at all because I'm recording this with the with the uh, laptop uh, microphone and all. So, anyways, um, I'm going to walk you guys through uh, setting up a time lapse with uh, Sharp Cap. So, you're going to need a, a camera that, uh, you know, is compatible with uh, Sharp Cap and all. And, uh, for me, I'm going to be using one of the ZWO cameras, which is a ZWO ASI 120MC. And uh, hopefully you have the All Sky uh, lens for it as well. So you're going to want to make sure to download SharpCap, uh, which you can get it from the description below if you guys want to download that. Make sure you guys do have a compatible camera, though, uh, that works with SharpCap. Alright, so go ahead and load up SharpCap here. And uh, make sure that you've installed the drivers for your camera as well, as well as, um, you know, making sure that the, uh, uh, the camera is detected uh, by SharpCap. So you're going to go up to the camera settings here, which is the camera uh, tab on SharpCap, and then go and find your camera, which for me would be the ZWASI 120MC. And from here, you should hopefully um you'll know, be able to load a screen similar to this until you get it actually into focus uh, the actual eye uh, of, the, of the camera so there's actually there should be like a little fisheye lens that comes with your ZWO camera so hopefully you're using a ZWO camera because a lot of these other cameras they don't include a, a fisheye uh, lens at all so anyways you're going to need to adjust the uh, settings uh, that are under the capture uh, this is capture format and area now the sharp cap developer will probably change a lot of these settings so they may be different by the time you get around to using uh, sharp cap and all so you'll have to play around with some of the settings and uh, figure it out but real quick let me stand up real quick alright so you're going to want to get the fisheye lens into a good focus so that you can actually see some of the stars there. Now, I don't know if you guys can actually see, but there's little little white dots that are uh, on the screen. In fact, down here at the bottom, you might be able to see a small uh, white dot, which right there, hopefully the cursor is showing up, is a star. As well as there's tons of little stars all in, in the background there, too. Alright, so... Obviously, you're gonna need to play with the exposure, um, as well as the color space too. You can you can change that as well, depending on what type of uh, codecs your your camera can use, as well as the capture area. So obviously, the higher the better, and all that stuff. Uh, binning, you obviously for me, I want to leave binning to one, and uh, the exposure here. I have it to I forgot this is it's like twelve. 07 is what it is, milliseconds. So that's what I have. And then my gain is set to um, 100. And uh, let's see what else. I have the maximum uh, frame rate limit as well as um, the uh, turbo USB. And these settings all depend on your camera too, so don't worry about some of the settings that might not work for yours. Also, uh, high speed mode is on as well because. My ZWO camera uh, requires a lot of these settings to be set, like the uh, high speed, um, high speed mode, and the uh, USB turbo, as well as maximum uh, the frame rate limit. Um, but yeah, once you have that, the and you can see your sky and all, and some of the stars are in somewhat in focus. Um, to, to actually capture a time lapse, all you have to do is go up to the Start Capture tab, and then from here, uh, I, sometimes I, I believe if you you have a clean install of SharpCap, you're set to unlimited. But if you go down here to where it says uh, Time Limit, right? So if you uh, pick this this section here. Depending on how long you want it to record for, you have it for hours, minutes, and seconds as well. And then uh, you have your perform uh, sequence captures. So the sequence length is like how many times you want to record. So you can set it, 
you know, to record for however long, you, how many hours you want to record for. And then there's the uh, interval uh, between captures. So, um, how how many like um, hours, minutes, and seconds between uh, each capture do you want to uh, capture? So, ideally, if you're trying to capture meteor showers and stuff, you'll want to have uh, it's set to at least one second, and unless the you know the meteors are are uh, are pretty pretty fast and all, so I don't know why they have it so that you can't change that for for five minutes. But uh, let's see if we can. No, okay. All right, there we go. So I had to uncheck the box and check it again. Uh, so I think I'm gonna change this from five. If I can see the number here, and we'll change that to a. A zero. I want to mm, let's see like thirty seconds, and we'll do about mm, like five minutes of capture. That's what I'll do. So now that I have that there, we just click the start capture, click the start button, and it will go ahead and start capturing. The uh, frames and stuff, and turn into depending on what you have for your output format. Um, if you have it set to auto, then it's going to pick the the best format for you. But you can always uh, uncheck the auto and go with whatever format your camera will allow you to use. So right now, it's going to record for via the next five minutes. And capture. Uh, hopefully, it's ca capturing uh, frames every every 30 seconds is what I'm hoping it's doing. If that was the correct um, settings to do and you all. Know. But if there's any satellites, right? Any satellites or meteor that comes streaking across within the five minute time, they should be they should be visible to see through through you playing it back, uh, when you play it through the video or, or pictures and all. So obviously if there's a, if an active meteor shower, you should be able to see them uh, quite often and stuff, especially if they're if it's a really active meteor shower. So just gonna let this record for <laughs> a whole five minutes. And uh, basically that's all you do. So after your your set time is uh, is finished, then you know it'll obviously stop capturing, and, and basically that will be it. You can go to the folder where you have it um, being saved to, and you can go back there and play the video files. Now you want to make sure you have a lot of disk space too, so you, you make make sure you have a good amount of storage on your computer and all for capturing uh, video and all. So. Because AVI files are known to be pretty big files and whatnot, uh, they can get up to you know, <laughs> depending on how long you record for. If you're gonna record for six hours or more, you're probably gonna be looking at an easy 10 uh, gig gigabytes of uh, storage you're gonna burn, if not more, uh, depending on how, what type of codec you're using as well, like the color space uh, for the capture format and area. So. Also, the uh, the bigger the capture, too, uh, the bigger the uh, capture area will obviously um, increase. Now, see, there's something right there that's going across right now. Not too sure if that's a plane or a satellite, but you'll see it going right in the middle of the screen there. It's slowly getting up there. I'm not too sure if that's a satellite or if that's an airplane that's flying over right now. But it's right there in the center now, and it's heading to the top now. So I did capture some some type of thing that's going across the screen there, which is which is why it's interesting to do a time lapse. I don't really want to look up because <laughs> it's probably an airplane. But let me just. Look. Well, I don't know if it's an airplane or not. I don't think it is.
No, I don't think that was an airplane. I see that's going over the house right there. Yeah, no, that looks like that might have been a satellite that went over there. It's surprising that it was actually picked up because I was thinking that was going to be an airplane, but that was actually a satellite that the uh, the camera picked up there. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, little capture. I wasn't expecting that to uh, to come over and all that stuff. So, uh, by the way, again, I. Uh, hopefully the audio is being captured from my microphone on my my laptop because I don't have a the uh, lap, uh, microphone hooked up externally to this laptop. So, yep, I got another I think another thirty or twenty seconds or so before this capture is done. I don't think we uh, really caught anything other than that satellite, maybe. And it should be done now, hopefully. Yep, there we go. So you can see there, uh, three frames were dropped out of 234 frames for five minutes. And the, the, frames, the uh, frames per second was pretty slow at 0 0.8 frames per second. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up this AVI file here. And we'll see what it captured. There you go, as you can see, it captured a nice little time lapse there. See, there you go, right up there. You see that? That was how fast that was. Let me see if I can capture this again. I'm going to try to stop it here. So there it is, right there. Right there, I'll see if I can, um, you know, uh, s slow that down so you guys can see that. Uh, as you can see it going across the screen there. There it goes. There's up there now. It's like right here now. And let me screw it again and then there it goes up there now. And it's gone. So that was a uh, interesting little capture. Let me see if I can repeat this again. Alright, so that there as you can see that's a time lapse. And there goes the object going across the screen, and now it's gone. The little time lapse came out pretty nice, though. And there goes the uh, satellite again. So let's see about the what's the three second mark? Yeah, about three seconds into the the video, right there starts to come through. Pew, and it's gone. But anyways, that's how you do a um, a time lapse with a sharp cap. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you guys out because I was curious on how you do the time lapse uh, as well. And I kind of figured it out when I was going through the sharp cap settings and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that will help you guys out with doing your time lapse and you look forward to doing it a time lapse there with, uh, with an upcoming meteor shower. So, anyways, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.